Today is International Stem Cell Awareness Day, and in this short video, I'm going to show you why this kind of day matters for everyone. I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Toronto who studies stem cells in the lab every single day. But today, I'm going to play the role of a concerned family member searching online for some treatments for a sick relative. Let's do it. So let's say I heard that stem cells are really hopeful and so great for medicine. I heard that in the news, so um, I'm just gonna Google stem cell therapy and see what comes up. The very first hit in my Google search, um, it's an ad, but I'm gonna click it anyway. It's for a website, infinityclinic.com, okay. I see advertisements that this clinic is a luxury and modern center for preventative medicine and regenerative stem cell therapy. Okay, 15 years, that's sounding good. It's a pretty nice website. I see that the team has a bunch of MD-PhDs. Looks pretty good, a bunch of doctors. They seem really nice. Okay, cool. So, so far I might be interested because this seems like it could be helpful. Let me go ahead and click treatments and see what they can offer for my family members. I'm taken to this page where I see that they have treatments for autism, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, Basically, anything under the sun that might be plaguing anyone in my family, really, from young to old age. The first red flag is that one clinic is doing treatments for a million different diseases. Things like autism, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, which are also really broad and heterogeneous conditions, and they're claiming that there's a stem cell therapy for them. You should note that the only stem cell treatments that have been proven to be effective and safe are those for hematopoietic stem cells. Those are regularly used in clinics all over the world for things like uh, recovery after chemotherapy, in some cases of cancer, and for some immune diseases, all related to blood. So uh, let's say I was interested in autism. It's the first one on the list. So let me click, I guess, free consultation. Oh, there's a discount for filling out a form. That's interesting. And I only get information if I fill in the details, and so not really open access. There is not even a rationale for why stem cells would be helpful in autism. We don't even understand what autism is because autism is a spectrum uh, condition, right? It can manifest in so many different ways. So the fact that one, we don't even understand what it is because it's heterogeneous. And even then, if you look at different parts of the spectrum, we still don't really understand what autism is characterized by, let alone how a stem cell that's just making new cells, maybe not even the right cell type, could be helpful for that. It just doesn't even make sense. So I'm having some questions right now at this point. I see like this big obnoxious 10% um, off thing, like as if I'm shopping BOGO for shoes or something. So starting to get a little bit curious about this website, but again, I'm desperate. So let me just do the FAQ and see what we have there. Okay, where do cells come from? What stem cells are used in your clinic? Fetal stem cells are harvested from growth zones of legally aborted and properly screened old, uh, 7 to 12 week old human fetuses. Okay, yes, we can definitely get stem cells from that age. Cool. Cancer risk. As for cancer, there is no such risk with fetal progenitor cells. That sounds great, if it were true. You'll never in medicine see no risk. I mean, even look at the most innocuous thing, like a multivitamin that you're taking over the counter or your Tylenol or some, some sort of regular thing that you take without thinking. There are risks associated written in the fine print. I mean, turn on the TV, watch any commercial and listen to the long list of, do not take this if pregnant blah, 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 for like 10 minutes. Everything has a risk. And in medicine, those are always very clearly communicated. So just hearing no risk is a problem. No cancer risk in particular, that will always be a concern for any type of stem cell therapy because stem cells are defined by their ability to proliferate, to divide as many times as they need to. Um, and that's true of embryonic stem cells from developing fetuses. And that's also true of adult stem cells all over your body. They are capable of division. That's why they're called stem cells. They might not always divide in the body, but they are capable of it by definition. So that just doesn't make sense. There will always be a cancer risk related to stem cell biology, at least for the foreseeable future. Mechanism of action. Guided by the signals from the affected areas of the body, and grafted in the affected areas, activate and start intensive multiplication. 
So yes, the goal of stem cell therapy is to inject in stem cells or some sort of cell made from stem cells, have them integrate into the correct location in the body, maybe the injury site or an area affected by disease. And as a result of that integration, um, have them recover whatever injury or disease you're suffering from. And that hopefully these cells will survive and you'll be perfect and everyone goes home happy and healthy. Yes, that is the logic. Unfortunately, it's actually really hard to grow up stem cells and their progeny in a dish, especially to get as many as you might need to help a human condition. It's also really hard to get those cells into the body. Even just putting them through a needle that you're going to use to inject, you have a ton of cell death. But let's say that you can overcome those because with some clever bioengineering, we can get pretty good at overcoming those two challenges. Then you have the problem of getting the stem cells going where you want them to go. And once they get there, you want them to stay there. And then once they stay there, you want them to survive. And most of the time they die. Like I've seen numbers like 0.001% of cells will survive after injection. So you need them to, to get there, you need them to survive. Then you need them to integrate in a way that makes sense in a way that our bodies take you know, months to uh, wire up when we're developing. But okay, let's say you can do all that. Then you need them to survive long-term and for that long-term survival to contribute to some sort of um, positive health outcome and for no risks or no adverse effects to come years afterwards. <sighs> we haven't done that yet. That's what thousands of scientists around the world are currently doing, and you have people in labs everywhere just tackling one small piece of that big puzzle I just described. We haven't done it yet, and in fact, once we do get good at doing each of those individual steps, we'll still have to do long-term phase four clinical trial studies where we see long-term are there any adverse effects? Did anyone develop a tumor or some sort of cancer even though we thought they wouldn't? There just hasn't been time. Stem cells are a really new area of study, and we just don't know all these things yet. Side effects. There are no side effects associated with stem cell therapy. I'm clicking more and that's it. I'm gonna stop there. Um, yeah. There are no side effects, okay. References. Under the law of, U of Ukraine, disclosure of medical information is strictly prohibited. Therefore, we can only provide details of the patients upon their consent. And there is nothing else. For them to have no references at all is just not okay. It is possible that if uh, some sort of research was patented or it's being privately funded, that it could be proprietary and therefore not publicly disclosed. However, in most cases, especially in biomedical research, it won't get to that stage without years of you know, publicly funded research in academic institutions. And you probably would have seen a few peer-reviewed scientific papers about it somewhere. I also think that you would have had a lot of media reporting about it um, because these things take so long to discover leading up to any big discovery or any new treatment you'll have had years of research you know even fast in in medicine times is like several several years at least and so you would have had some sort of media talk about this and it's just shocking that they have nothing to cite here like there should be something however minimal you should be able to link to some sort of external website um, that's legitimate and patient testimonials are just not sufficient because um, patients get into these really desperate states where they've paid a lot of money and there's just a lot of bias that goes into those testimonials. And at the same time, maybe something the clinic did could have been helpful. Maybe it wasn't necessarily the stem cells they put in that were helpful, but it was like the media that they were injecting the stem cells in. Or maybe it was short-term helpful, but long-term could give someone cancer. It's important to note that experimental procedures are not the same as clinical trials, and even things on the website clinicaltrials.gov are not guaranteed to be legitimately approved and regulated um, potential medical treatments. In any case, when you're trying to see if a clinical trial is legitimate or not, one of the most important things you can do when it comes to making a health decision is checking in with your doctor. You can ask a scientist to review the science that would be behind the treatment, but ask your doctor as well if they've heard of this, if they trust this clinic, if they know of the hospital or, or third-party clinic that's offering this thing, and um, you can get feedback from them as to whether it's legitimate. You should... Okay, that was Google's number one search. Verdict? No, <laughs> absolutely no. Okay, so I showed you the bad and the ugly. What about the good? 
If I ignore the ads, which it's probably a good idea to ignore things that had to pay to be at this top of the search results, and instead go to my first hit, um, I see something from the Stem Cell Foundation. Uh, I see something from closerlookatstemcells.org. These are two really good resources where um, this was made by the Canadian Stem Cell Foundation, by people that I know and work with and that I know that you can trust. This, A Closer Look at Stem Cells, was made by the International Society for Stem Cell Research, again made by the top stem cell scientists in the world, and it has some really, really good resources for you. Clinical trials, things to consider before enrolling in what you may think is a clinical trial. The really good thing they have are these nine things to know about stem cell treatments. Number one is really important, and I think one that not a lot of people know about. It's that the list of diseases for which stem cell treatments have been shown to be beneficial is still very short. The best defined and most extensively used is hematopoietic or blood stem cell transplants. These are mostly for immune disorders, as I mentioned, and for uh, rebuilding the blood system after treatments for some kinds of cancer. That's basically it. Go to closerlookatstemcells.org. I'll link it everywhere that I can as a resource. Stem cells are really amazing and can teach us a lot about our bodies, including how to heal them. But that hope is only possible without the hype that we see online and in the media about stem cells. So please be responsible in how you consume your stem cell information, what kind of stem cell information you share, and don't be afraid to ask a scientist or your doctor for some help navigating what is now a very confusing digital world.